In my previous video, I demonstrated the TTP224 module with four touch buttons. In this video, TTP229 module is presented, which has 16 touch buttons and is serially interfaced with Arduino. This module is based on the IC TTP229, which is designed to detect up to 16 capacitive touch buttons. The module can provide eight direct buttons through these output pins here, which can be connected directly to a microcontroller. Or it can give us 16 buttons, all of the 16 buttons, by using two wire serial interfacing through the pins serial clock and serial data out. To access all of the 16 buttons on the module, we need to put a jumper here between these two terminals. Without the jumper, we can only access the first eight touch buttons. The module can detect either single button touch or multi button touch based on this terminal here. Without a jumper here, the module will detect single button touch. With this jumper, we will have multi button option. The other terminals here will determine other functionalities of the module. Please refer to the datasheet of the TTP229 for more information. In this video, the module is interfaced with the Arduino using two-wire serial connection, where the serial clock is connected to pin 12 and the serial data out is connected to pin 13. And now for a quick demonstration. For this demonstration, a capacitive touch stylus pen is used. To understand how we can read uh, key presses from the module serially, we need to look at the timing diagram of the TTP229 IC taken from the data sheet. We need 16 clock pulses, and the first clock pulse will be associated with uh, key number one, and uh, the second clock pulse with the second key, and the last clock pulse will be for the key 16. To enable data on the serial data outline, we need the clock to go from high to low. This is called uh, trailing edge triggering or as the manual calls it active low triggering. When no key is pressed, D0 to D15 will all be at logic 1. When we press a key, let's say key number 1 or the first key, then D0 will be at logic 0 and we know that it's the first key because it corresponds to the first uh, clock pulse of the SCL line. This diagram shows the serial clock and the serial data lines connected to a scope. So here we have the clock signal running at 80 kHz. And here we have the SDO line. So when we press a key, let's say key 10, then the SDO line goes from logic 1 to logic 0, indicating that a key has been pressed. And the frequency of this signal is 80 divided by 16, which is 5 kHz. We can simulate this clock signal inside an Arduino sketch by using a for loop that will loop 16 times to cover the 16 keys of the module. Inside the loop, we need to send a logic zero to the serial clock line to enable the output of the SDO. Next, we check the SDO line for any key press. So when we have a logic zero, we know that a key has been pressed and we know which key from its corresponding clock pulse. Next, we send uh, over the serial clock line uh, logic one so that we are ready to scan the next subsequent key press. A quick look at the C++ code. Inside the loop function, we need to use a for loop that will loop 16 times so that we can generate 16 clock pulses. Inside the for loop, we need to send the low pulse through the serial clock line to enable the serial data output line. And then we check the serial da data output line for logic zero. If we have logic zero, then uh, a button has been pressed. Then we store the position of that button. And then we send a logic high through the serial uh, clock line so that we are ready for the next uh, 
uh, key press scan. Once the press button position is stored in this variable, then this if statement becomes true, and then we send the, uh, the value of the press button to the serial monitor, and the process continues. In a future video, the TTP229 module will be integrated in an Arduino project utilizing the DF Player Mini. Thank you for watching.